May 13th. Here's the thing. I was probably going to write a book when I got older anyways, about what it's like growing up on the levee in Stockton, where every other person you meet has missing teeth or is leaning against the liquor store wall, begging for chains to buy beer. Or maybe it'd be about my dad dying in the stupid war and how at the funeral they gave my mom some cheap metal and a folded flag and shot a bunch of rifles at the clouds. Or maybe the book would just be something about me and my brother Diego, how we hang out mostly by ourselves, pulling corroded looking fish out of the murky levee water and throwing them back. How sometimes when my mom falls asleep in front of the TV, we'll sneak out of the apartment and we'll walk around the neighborhood looking into other people's windows, watching them sleep. That's the weirdest thing, by the way, that every person you come across always lays down in a bed under the covers and closes their eyes at night. Cops, teachers, parents, hot girls, pro ballers, everybody. For some reason, it makes people seem so much less real when I look at them. Anyways, at first I was worried standing there next to the hunchback old man they gave me for a lawyer, both of us waiting for the judge to make his verdict. I thought maybe they'd put me away for a group of years because of what I did. But then I thought real hard about it. I squinted my eyes and concentrated with my whole mind. That's something you don't know about me. I can sometimes make stuff happen just by thinking about it. I try not to do it too much because my head mostly gets stuck on bad stuff. But this time, something good actually happened. The judge only gave me a year in a group home. He said I had to write a journal so some counselor could try to figure out how I think. If you didn't know, I was probably going to write a book anyways. Or that it's hard as hell being at home these days after what happened. So when he gave out my sentence, it was almost like he didn't give me a sentence at all. I told my mom the same thing when we were walking out of the courtroom together. I said, yo, ma, this isn't so bad, right? I thought those people would lock me up and throw away the key. She didn't say anything back, though. Didn't look at me either. Matter of fact, she didn't look at me all the way up till the day she had to drive me to juvenile hall, drop me off at the gate where two big, beefy white guards were waiting to escort me into the building. And even then, she just barely glanced at me for a split second. And we didn't hug or anything. Her face seemed plain, like it would on any other day. I tried to look at her real good as we stood there. I knew I wasn't going to see her for a while. Her skin was so much whiter than mine, and her eyes were big and blue. And she was wearing the fake diamond earrings she always wears that sparkle when the sun hits them at a certain angle. Her blonde hair all pulled back in a ponytail. For some reason, it hit me hard right then, as one of the guards took me by the arm and started leading me away. How mad pretty my mom is. For real. It's like someone's picture you'd see in one of the magazines laying around the dentist's office, or on a TV show, and she's actually my mom's. I looked over my shoulder as they walked me through the gate, but she still wasn't looking at me. It's okay, though. I understood why. It's because of what I did.